One of the key athletic characteristics of athletes in sports like basketball, football, or volleyball is vertical jump, how high you can jump off of the ground. One of the common ways of measuring this is by having a stand like this where you measure your initial standing reach and then increment the stand to see how high you can touch, and then you subtract how high you can touch from the original standing reach to calculate your vertical jump. However, not everyone always has access to this kind of device, and so another way of doing this would be with something like a vertical jump mat, where you have sensors in the mat that detect when you've jumped and landed, and then use the time of flight to reverse engineer how high you've jumped. In this video, we're going to simulate a vertical jump testing mat that measures vertical jump based on time of flight by using computer vision and image classifiers. So from our videos of jumps, we're able to extract the image frames, which gives us about 30 frames per second using OpenCV2. With these video frames, we're going to label them into on the ground, such as this clip, or in the air, such as this clip. And then we're going to use the duration of the time in the air in order to calculate vertical jump. So our image classifier is being trained to uh, classify in the air or on the ground. Hopefully this project will help uh, inspire what you can do with computer vision and you'll find it interesting. To start this project, we extract the image frames from the video data by using OpenCV2. We import OpenCV2 and import the image utils library, and we open up the video by using this syntax of cv2.videocapture and then the path to the uh, movie file in the current directory that we're in. So we use while success to see if we've successfully been reading the video, and then we take the frames and then we rotate them. I'm not sure if this is a problem with OpenCV2 or my setup with it, but in my setup of it, it opens it up uh, rotated 90 degrees. So I use the image utils library to uh, center the frame back upright. So now you use the cv2.imwrite function, you set the directory that you want to write the data into, and then you write it, and then at the end you close the uh, video capture. Now that we've extracted the image frames, we need to label our data. So we do this by going through the data set and looking at when we take off of the ground and then when we come back to the ground in order to uh, group classify a series of frames and then drag them into the label data air folder. So some of the interesting things about labeling this data is you notice that um, there is a lot of interesting like fringe cases. So in this case, it's tough to tell if you're on the ground or if you're uh, still in the air sort of because of the blur of the video, as well as clips like this, where this one is really tricky to tell if you're uh, on the ground or if you're in the air yet. So it might be interesting to extend this classifier third uh, to have a third class, and this would help with uncertainty. But even so, when we just label these classes as either air or ground sort of arbitrarily, the classifier is still able to figure it out and achieve 99.9% accuracy. In this tutorial, I was able to get about 3,000 images in the air class and on the ground. So I decided it would be a good idea to use the uh, pre-trained ImageNet models that you can get from the Keras.applications and use this in order to help by uh, using transfer learning to help with this problem of having somewhat limited data. So we're going to resize this data to 224 by 224 for input into the ImageNet model. You could also do something like add your own convolutional layers to downsample it and prepend this to the uh, pre-trained ResNet for ImageNet if you'd like to, but in this case I found that it doesn't really uh, degrade accuracy at all and the images themselves don't even really look too distorted when you resize them to 224 by 224. So in this code we use the uh, OS library in order to loop through the directory of our labeled data, which we've seen how uh, I'm labeling the data by just uh, putting all the ground images into this folder labeled data slash ground. So we use the pillow library to open this image, uh, we resize it with pillow, we convert it to a NumPy array, and then we use the image IO library to write this image to this path, which we're now in the resize dataset folder, and we make sure we put the image in as well. Resizing our images in this way results in images like this that are uh, 1080 by 1920 into images like this, 224 by 224. So in this case, we still see that we can detect that it's off the ground, but we do see that by not preserving the aspect ratio, we have kind of distorted the image, but in this case, it's not very important. The classifier is still able to overcome this. So now we're looking at training our image classifier to classify images as air or ground. So first we import TensorFlow, we import Keras, and then we import a lot of things from Keras, like the image data generator, different callbacks, the uh, model class, and then layers like the dense fully connected layer, global average pooling, and then in this line of code is where we're importing the pre-trained uh, ResNet model. So we do from tensorflow.keras to applications.resnet50, import ResNet50. And this is gonna be our pre-trained image net model that we're gonna use in order to uh, have some transfer learning with when we're learning to classify the air ground because we only have 3,000 images in each class, so some transfer learning will definitely help us get started. So now we're going to be loading our data set into memory in order to cache it with the tf.data object. I recently learned that you can also pass in data to the tf.data object with TensorFlow 2.0 by passing it in the uh, location of the directory, but I think that this is going to be faster and our data set is so small when we've resized it to 224 by 224 and we only have about 6,000 images, this is really only like a 50 megabyte uh, data set so it's not really going to be 
uh, too heavy to be loading it into memory and caching it in this way. In these lines of code, we're converting our training images into NumPy arrays as the float32 data, data points, and then we're normalizing them by dividing each pixel value by the maximum pixel value of 255, and then we're also converting our labels into a NumPy array. These blocks of code are the meat of the computer vision tutorial in this video. So here we're importing our optimizer, the Stochastic Gradient Descent Optimizer, and then here we're defining our uh, distributed training strategy using the TensorFlow 2.0 API. So we see how we do this by doing tf.distribute.mirrorstrategy, and then we use this to print out how many GPUs we have. In this case, we're using the Data Science PC by Digital Storm that has two Titan RTX GPUs on it, and then we use this syntax in order to set up our batching. So now within the strategy.scope, which is where we define uh, the strategy here, we're defining our model. So we start out with the base model is that uh, ResNet 50 that we got from the Keraset applications, and we choose not to include the top, which is that final uh, like 1,000 way uh, dense layer for classifying the 1,000 ImageNet classes. So now we use the syntax from the Keras functional API to add an extra layer in order to uh, do our new task of uh, you know binary classification. So we add two dense layers, and then we add our third dense layer, which is doing the prediction. So we have the ReLU activations on the two dense layers that we've added to the end of the ResNet 50, and then we have Sigmoid on the final dense layer outputting air or ground. So now we set up the model in this way by using inputs equals the base model.input, which is up top here, and then outputs equals pred, short for prediction, which is what we're defining here by passing in the previous layer, uh, like recursively like this, using the uh, functional API from Keras. So now we set the parameters of the Stochastic Gradient Descent Optimizer and we compile the model. So now we load our training data into the tensorflow.data object and then we cache it onto the memory using uh, this syntax. So now we're doing the training by doing model.fit and we see initially the accuracy is pretty slow to uh, get really good. It's starting at 55% and then 81, 91, 94, and then eventually towards epoch 100, it'll achieve 99.9% .9 accuracy. So then we save our weights by doing model.save and then the weights in the .h5 file, which we're gonna use to load the weights for inference when we want to classify a new vertical jump uh, video to get the frames that you spent in the air. So now we're going to take our pre-trained model and use it for inference in order to classify how many frames we spend in the air and then report this back to the user. So we start off by importing necessary libraries from Keras, we define our model, and then we load the weights into the model through this syntax of model.loadWeights, and we make sure that we have the same architecture as the original model. So this is the logic for using the model for inference in order to load in a jumping video and then classify the individual frames and output how many consecutive uh, in-the-air frames we have at once. So we start off by opening the video with the CV2 video capture, and then we start looping through the frames and running our model on them. So we use this if type frame does not equals none in order to avoid the error of when OpenCV2 opens a bad frame. So we rotate the frame back upwards. As I mentioned before, the OpenCV2 library seems to open it like rotated 90 degrees. I'm not sure if this is just my, uh, you know, my version of CV2, but so you can just use this if you have the same problem. So now we load the frame into a pillow image object and then we use this to resize it down to 224 by 224, which is what our model takes in as input. So now we convert this image frame into a NumPy array, uh, float32 data point, data type, then we divide it by the max pixel value, and now we're ready to pass it to our model. So first we have to do this mp.expand dimensions. This is because the model is used to taking in like uh, you know, one by 32 by 32 by three, if it's say CFAR 10, it's not, it can't just take in 32 by 32 by three. So we expand the dimension, so this is making it one by 24 by 24 by three. So now we predict the uh, label of this uh, image frame, and then if the label is greater than a threshold that we define, we increment the in the air counter. So if it is not, if it's on the ground, we check if the air counter is greater than one, so if we have detected it in the air already, and then if so, we'll print out the air counter and then we'll reset it back to zero because we're on the ground in this frame. And then we'll use the timer just to get a sense of uh, how long this is taking. So in this video clip that uh, we're playing with, this trimmed clip five, we have three like high effort jumps and then two quick jumps in order to just test that it's uh, classifying it well. So we see in this first three, we're in the air for 18 frames, 19 frames, and then 18 frames again. And then on the less effort jumps, we're in the air for 10 frames and then 12 frames. Thanks for watching this tutorial on building a vertical jump test with computer vision. I hope that this project was interesting to you and helped inspire your own creativity to see what kind of projects you might be able to do with computer vision and image classifiers. Some of the future directions I'd like to take this project is to see how well the model generalizes to different kinds of things like different lighting, you know, different background environments, and then things like different shoes, socks, all these different things that might affect the generalization ability of the classifier. 
Also, I think it would be really cool to put in a text-to-speech API such that there's an app that's looking at you jump and then outputs how many frames you've been in the second. So say you're jumping and then you have a voice that says 18 frames, 19 frames. And I think this would be a really interesting app to help with vertical jump training and this kind of workout. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.